Hello everybody, my name is Kaylee and today I'm going to be showing you um, a little candy cup tutorial that I'm going to do. It's going to involve some Bria Reese inks, which you can find right on Counterculture's website. This is one of the new shimmer ones. I'm using a couple different colors. Some of them are shimmer, some of them aren't. You can pick whatever you want. You can start with whatever base color cup you want. You can start with glitter base. I have a bunch of different candy from CC DIY. I have Jolly Lollies, Dilly Dallies, Pretty Palms, Happy Bears. I love Happy Bears. And the Jolly Lollies. I think I already said that one. Um, but I think I have two packs and that's why I picked both. Whoops, I do. I have two packs, so double the Jolly Lollies. Um, along with that, you're going to need some nice and thick because we're going to do a drip. And I'm going to use Fast Set. I am going to put Sterling Snow in my drip because I am obsessed with the way it looks on a drip. And the cup that I'm using, this is the base coat of the cup. It's glittered and epoxied. And this one also has a lid. I have the lid sanded, but it's fine for adding the inks on. It's not going to harm it at all. So we're going to get started. First thing we're going to do is we're just going to apply our inks because that's going to be the first step. Um, if you are familiar with the Unbreakable Cups, um, I'm doing a similar ink method. I am using these little sponge brushes. Um, so yeah. I did not come up with this style of inks. This was done with the Unbreakable Cups by Kisha Wallace. Um, people have come up with different ways of using the inks. This is one way that I like using them. Um, but yeah, I like the design on it. I've also put a little bit of my own spin on it sometimes, but this is what we're gonna do. I like this color, but at the same time, I wanna do something different with this cup. We're gonna go with some different colors, just kind of give it some depth. I love the colors of the Bria Reese inks. So you're just gonna add like a little dot, let it move around a little bit, use your sponge brush and just give it a little dab. We just wanted to have like this really subtle look. You do it all throughout the cup. This one is the Bria Reese um, lavender that I'm using first. go in with all different colors just kind of dab it around however you'd like I am going to try and leave a little bit of the teal color showing because I just want like a whole bunch of different colors on this cup you can put as little or as much as you'd like you can choose different colors deeper colors whatever you would like to do there's no right or wrong way to do this for any of this cup Gonna dab some on the bottom of the cup. Doesn't have to be perfect. The way that you put the inks on does not matter. Now I'm going to go in with my uh, shimmer Bria Reese ink. This is the lilac. I think it's gonna be pretty light in color, but that's okay. Ooh, look at the shimmer. Very light. I like the subtlety of it. Again, I let it kind of do its thing a little bit. Give it a couple quick dabs. Do you kind of see the contrast in the two colors? One's darker, one's lighter. You can see once they move together, you kind of get some, I almost like little cells, but you'll get more as we continue on. I kind of want to go in with some of the other colors now. We're going to use Rose. We're using our darkest color last because it kind of soaks up in the sponge and then kind of the only color you get. Your colors can bleed together a little bit. It's not going to um, be harmful at all to it. A 
let them kind of go where they want. Again, get the bottom, a little bit of ink in there. If you were to do this on a white base, your colors would be extra vibrant. I'm just choosing to put them on a color base because I want them to be kind of subtle. Um, because I want the candy to be the big showstopper in this cup. And now I'm going to go in with the red. I think this is going to be pretty like vibrant on there. That's okay. Nothing wrong with that. Ooh, it's almost looking like pinkish. And I kind of just dab my brush a little bit, sponge, whatever you want to call it, um, before soaking it with more ink because the more you soak it, the more it's going to just keep bleeding with the other inks. And I kind of want to make it a, get a little bit more subtle. I'm just kind of dabbing a little bit, blending with the other colors. not a big fan of this big spot here so I'm going to add I think a little bit of purple in there to kind of make it a little bit more subtle not the biggest fan of that spot but we're gonna work with it I could add a little bit of like rubbing alcohol on there to fix it but once we have like our drops and stuff on there I think it'll be okay what I will do now though is I do kind of want to make that a little bit more subtle. I have rubbing alcohol. I'm just gonna put a little bit on a sponge brush on a clean one. I don't want to get more red all over the place. I just put a couple drops right on my brush, sponge brush, whatever you wanna call it. And that's kind of helping make it a little bit more subtle. Gives you a little bit more of that cell cell look to it. Made it a little more subtle the way I wanted it. Might be thinking that looks really weird right now. That's totally okay. Because it's going to all blend and come together. just wants kind of like a subtle color to it. I wanted to dim down that red just a little bit even though that shimmer is gorgeous. I did, just didn't want it to take away from when we put the candy on. So this is what we have. I know it looks kind of funky right now but you have to trust the process because this is going to be pretty cool. I don't have a decal picked out for this yet but um I'm really enjoying like the watercolor look to this. Just very subtle. So we're gonna let this dry. Just doing a couple more dabs on the bottom of the cup, make sure I got some color there. I'll let this dry. I'm gonna um, add colors to the lid. I have the lid here. Just because I don't want it to not match the cup. Add a little purple. I'm gonna use the smaller brush just so that it gets where it needs to. The sponges that I have kind of have like a depth of color on them already, so I'm just kind of using that instead of soaking up and wasting any. Use what you have. And so you took just a single colored glitter tumbler and you made it multiple colors. Save the tumbler. You know, it looks funky right now, but we're trusting the process.
And now what we're going to do is we're going to add our drip. We're actually going to set the lid aside um, because we're not doing anything with the lid right now. That for now is actually done. I just wanted to match the actual cup. Now what we're going to do is we're actually going to mix up our fast set to make our drip. And this is a super easy thing to do. Um, what you're going to do is you're going to mix about 5 mLs of each um, of each part of epoxy. I'm using fast set. You can use whatever you have. You can use regular epoxy as well. You don't have to use fast set. I just prefer it. Makes the process go extra fast. You want to make sure if you're working with fast set that you work fast enough because there's um, like a 15 minute work time. Just measuring my two parts. Oop, I over poured a little bit, so I'm gonna pour a little bit more. I usually keep it at like eye level to pour just because it makes it easier for accuracy. I don't use syringes, I just pour some in medicine cups and I um, measure it in the measuring cup, the medicine cup. There we have just a little over 10 mLs. So what you're going to do is I just use a popsicle stick and I just start mixing it around. Once I feel like I have it mixed well enough, I'm going to go ahead and add my sterling snow and some nice and thick. I make my drips very thick because I want to be able to get as much control as to how it's moving as possible. You don't really have to worry about bubbles when it comes to this. They will all pop as you are working. You can even see they come to the surface and they pop. Um, I've never really had an issue with bubbles. I've always had them go away. If for some reason you get some bubbles, what you can do is just give a little spritz of um, rubbing alcohol and it works like magic. I have a cup that I did that was black and it is just gorgeous. Not a single bubble. I just eyeball my nice and thick. I just dump some in. I do like mine really thick. So I dump a decent amount. I'm also going to put in my sterling snow at this time because I want it all to mix in very well. Sterling snow kind of gets in the air. You will probably see little spots flying in the air. It's completely fine. But it makes for a beautiful drip. And I add a lot of because I want mine to be nice and sparkly. I know it's going to make a mess, but it is a mess that is well worth it. So now I just carefully start mixing this all together. And as you can see, it's very thick. That is okay. That is what I want. If I wanted it to drip um, a lot, I would make it a little less thick. But this is super thick, easy to control. And that's what we're going for. I'm going to zoom out a little bit just to make this easier for you to watch. So we have that nice and mixed up. I don't mix my epoxy for any set time, I just kind of eyeball it. Once it looks clearish, that's when I added all of my nice and thick and my sterling snow. So this is where I go in. And I work pretty fast with this. I didn't have to epoxy over this, the inks yet, because it can all get epoxied over the drip. I just go in, I wrap it around my um, stirrer, and I just put it on really thick. I like my drips to be thicker instead of thinner. Don't worry, you can always go in and clean up the rim if you get some over, especially since you're on a stainless cup. Makes it super easy. I try and just get some all the way up on the top. 
It's going to look messy at first, that is okay. I'm gonna grab more on my popsicle stick. I twirl it, that's how I get good control of it. Again, I just go in. and really make sure I get all of that top coated. I set it down so the drips can move as I get more epoxy on my uh, popsicle stick. Again, I twirl it on my stick. You can see it's very thick. That is perfect. And add some more. I will continue to watch this to make sure that the top stays covered, otherwise you're gonna have some of the coloring underneath just peeking out, which I don't really want. It's okay if it does, it's not the end of the world. I just like to get mine fully covered. And this still has enough movement, so when I set it down, the inks are gonna start to move. So you can start tapping it I'm going to move you up so you can watch me tap it. So you can just watch it kind of give it a couple taps and it's going to start moving. Even on its own, it's just going to start moving. That is completely okay. This is where I go in now. I add some more because I want to keep getting that movement in there. I want those drips. Candy's going to go in there. I think of this as like a frosting drip. Like a, like a vanilla buttercream drip with candy on it. And we're just gonna keep letting this do its thing. Might look like you have like little pieces sticking up. It will all smooth out as you let it drip and do its own thing. See the drips are finally starting to move a little bit. You could always hit it with some heat if you wanted. I want to add a little bit more right there. Get that movement, those drips. Oops. Oop, now I'm flinging it. If you put it on thicker in certain spots, it'll start to move. You'll get that drip that you're wanting. And give it a little tap tap you can see it's all moving once your drips are where they're at because this will set pretty fast um, because we're using fast set I'm not loving this I'm gonna try and touch this up a little bit right here let that do its thing Now we're just letting the epoxy do its thing. Give it a couple good taps. It's getting kind of just the way I want it. These are our drips now. Kind of right where I want it to be. So now um, is where you can kind of start adding your candy. And then after I'm done with the candy, I actually just stick it right on my turner to keep moving. That way the um, resin isn't continuing to drip. It'll just keep um, continuing to stay where it's at. So here's one of the little palm candies. I stick one on there. And I can feel that the epoxy is already like pretty thick and setting. One of the, ho the um, Jolly Lollies. A gummy bear. I could even add sprinkles to this if I wanted, but we're just gonna go with the candies. I really like them. Obsessed with the happy bears. You just kind of put things wherever you want them, and I keep spinning it. That way it all stays in place. As soon as I get this candy on there, I work pretty fast. So that I can get it all right on the turner. 
said, nothing really moves as best as possible. There's no really rhyme or reason to where I'm placing things. I just kind of put them where I feel like I want them. Maybe I want two palms there. Put another little thing there. And there you have it. There is our candy tumbler. And so now this will go directly on the turner. That way nothing moves and everything will stay right in place. So if you give this a try, go ahead and post it on the counterculture um, Facebook group. I'm going to get this spinning so that things like that don't happen because it'll cure right in the epoxy. And then it'll get a layer of epoxy over top to seal everything in. And there you have it. If you give this a shot, um, make sure you post it in the counterculture group so we can all see it. And I hope you enjoy this tutorial. Bye.